Hey, it's Dave. And Jerry. All right, <laughs> and welcome to another episode of Hook on Headwaters. And for today, we're going to cover free lining shiners. We've gotten a lot of requests from our viewers. Hey, can you guys do a little video on how to how to rig up and how to f and, um, and fish free line shiners? So ask Captain Jerry, he's gonna walk us through it. We also have a quick fishing report for you at the end of, at the end of this segment. Um, one a funny thing is that we try to film this now a couple of times. Uh, on uh, the first day, it was blowing like uh, I don't know. Listen, Dude, we had, it, well, we had forty mile an hour <laughs> north winds. We had a cold yeah. front coming the day after that, and I was like, yeah. "This is insane." Yeah. And and uh, so the camera went <laughs> whoop, and fell over, which should be a blooper right now. I'm gonna show that right now. <laughs> It's blowing today, folks. So we have some. He's in the back. Here goes the camera. <laughs> Speaking of five, we're live. Whoa! See, it's blowing, folks. Let me line ourselves up again. <laughs> That's good footage. Okay. All right, folks. That was that was a bit funny. So uh, anyway, I'm going to turn it over to Captain Jerry. Captain Jerry, okay. I'm going to go to the camera. See ya. <laughs> See what I deal with. <laughs> All right, folks. Let me get spun around here to my right. All right, folks. We've been fishing a lot lately, uh, especially since this cold front has come through. Um, and I would say probably today's what? Wednesday. I would probably say Monday. Maybe yesterday they really started to turn around and now they're starting to get acclimated to this and they're starting to warm up and they actually fight when you hook them. So we fished yesterday, we fished today. Um, big numbers of fish both days. And I noticed at a place I was at today that a couple weeks ago there were a lot of smaller fish being called and now there's a lot of big fish in that area. So the way that I catch these fish, a lot of these fish are free lining. Uh, some guys just fish corks. They'll set it 30 inches deep, no, no sinker, no, 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 no kind of weight, anything like that. That's our typical way that we do them with a cork, you know, 30, 24, 30 inches. Um, but what I have fallen in love with in the last couple fishing seasons is to free line them. And the reason I do that is because when you set that fish at 30 inches, that's about all you get. Um, when you free line them, that fish can go up to nine to 10 to 12 foot of water if you are in 18 to 20 foot of water. And some of those bigger fish right now in transition period are still in that deeper water. So I like to free line fish them. And this is typically, I'm gonna show you guys a little bit of, of the equipment that I use, the hooks that I use, the line that I use, kind of how I go about doing it. And maybe it'll help you guys, you know, have better results in catching some fish on some free line shiners. So here we go. What I typically start out with folks, and I even do this with my corks, <laughs> all of my rods that I use <clears throat> for the stuff that I fish for are typically between seven foot and seven three, uh, medium heavy action with fast tips. I like, when I load up on that fish, I, I, first thing I do when a customer hooks a fish is I look at that rod tip and how loaded up that rod tip tells me and my brain right off the rip how big this fish is. Uh, they don't know yet, but I already know. I've seen it enough times that I know. So what I try to use in all of my applications, unless I'm artificial, all my shiner applications anyway, cork or free line, is I like to use a seven foot to a seven foot three medium heavy action fast tipped. Now that doesn't matter. I don't, I don't, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't matter if it's a star rod, a Kessler rod, an American bait works, a uh, halo rod. It doesn't matter what it is. Um, typically they're all a little bit different, but they all have the same principle. So medium heavy, seven foot, seven foot three, fast tipped, 50 pound braid is what I use. Sometimes I will tip that with a 24 inch, 50 pound test fluorocarbon leader. But most times I just fish a straight 50 or a 40 pound braid Power Pro, but you can use whatever preference you like. It doesn't matter what, 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 what line it is, but I just would be sure that it would be a braided line. Typically what I do then is I use anywhere from, I have, I have several different setups. I have a, uh, right here what I use is an Okuma 3000 Cayman 
they make them in a 4,000 as well. But you can get a Daiwa, you can get a Shimano, you know, whatever, whatever reel you preference. But I would go with a three or a 4,000. But what makes this unique is on this rod, seven foot, this one here is a seven. I have some seven threes. On a seven foot medium heavy action rod with a 50 pound braid with this 3,000 and it being a bait runner, which means you flip that switch forward and that shiner's out there in 12, 14 foot of water doing its business and all of a sudden that thing rings off. All you have to do at that point is click that reel over and set the hook. 99% of the time, when he starts peeling that line off of that reel, it's already in his mouth, he's already got it. Just peel back and set the hook on him. Um, 50 pound braid. The hook that I use is a Demon. It's made by Mustad. It is an offset, not inline. It is an offset three or four aught. Either one doesn't matter. But it is a Mustad offset Demon circle hook. It is for live bait and live bait only. Depending on how deep of the water you're in, depending on how much hydrilla is in that water and how far from the bottom it comes up, will depend on whether you're at that time free line and set that shiner up through the mouth. And we have one here. <coughs> and these are our shiners that we use. We have several different kinds. You have a domestic shiner that's raised on a farm. And for people that are coming in and out of town, they're a little more expensive. This is a Florida Golden Shiner. This shiner was caught from a netter out of a lake in the wild and they're brung here and then the bait shop buys them and then you buy them from the bait shop but these are the shiners that you need i mean they're just candy to these bass if i am free lining them depending on the depth of the water and you have to make that decision for yourself you have to decide on what depth of the water you're in <clears throat> there's two ways that i hook these shiners and i hook them this way even with a cork some guys come from the bottom up through the lip. I, my whole life, have always come from the top pop. You'll hear a pop. And that shiner's ready to go. When you plug him, what I call plugging him is when you hit him with that hook, the initial hook set, you see how hard that is to get off? You go too far back, he'll bleed immediately. That's a no-go. You'll feel that it's hard, it's like a bone. You wanna come up to where that lip almost, see that? You wanna catch that fish right in the top of that lip, come through the bottom, it'll make a click, and he's ready to roll. Other guys, and it's not wrong, it's just different styles, different preferences. Other guys come from the bottom lip, back up through the top. Either way is fine. If you're in deeper water and the hydrilla, which is a vegetation that grows from the bottom to the surface, all of it starts from the bottom. This is not a floating mat system. This is a system that grows from the lake bed up. And in some areas, it'll be three feet from the surface. Some areas, it'll be to the surface. Those areas where it's to the surface, you fish right off of it. It'll be a ledge. And that's where them fish will be. Another way to hook it, if you've got hydrilla coming almost to the surface, but you've got 18 inches of water with nothing on it, you'll bring him in here and you'll hook him to the back. And what this will do is make him act like a fool on the surface. He'll carry on and act around the fool and then that fish can come up there and just clobber him. Those are the ways that I hook them. Some guys, you may hook them to the tail. Listen, it doesn't matter. If you can get him out there and the fish are there, they'll hit him. Some ways are better than others on some days. Some ways are better than others in different water conditions, different water depths. But typically, you either hook them to the top to the bottom, to the bottom to the top, or you hook them to the dorsal in the back and uh, let them do their business. And 99% of the time, you're going to have results off of them. And, you know, that's pretty much it. That's, that's what I do to freeline them. Come on, Mr. Dave. I'm waiting on you, buddy. No, it looks up. The shiner seen better days, but you come on up here anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right.
All right, folks, mm. I'm back from the camera. They smell different out of the water. <laughs> Jerry, Jerry kind of got that stank. He got that shiner oh, stank to him. Old, everything I own got shiner stink <laughs> on it. My girl says, take them off outside, you stink. <laughs> so that was really, really good info right there. Um, I have fished them all in all different ways, but uh, certainly when we went out to you, we were mouth hooking them. And uh, a lot of guys ask me, good. they're like, why do you hook them to the top instead of the bottom? Yep, it's just a yep. prep. You know, it's, it, it's nothing that somebody told me or right. it's just when I started shiner fishing, the very first one I ever hooked, I hooked him to the top right, right, and it's right, always right. worked. So I've never changed. Yeah. 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 And that wouldn't change. Would that change based on a, a hook? <laughs> well, well, here we're well, you know, through my years, through yeah. my years of shiner fishing, I, I mean, I, as you can see, perfect example, <laughs> lots of different words. <laughs> in different places. <laughs> These are all different aught hooks from different companies, different sizes, different shanks, different offsets that I have used over the last five or six years to right. get to the hook that I'm at now that I feel is the best hook for customers. Right. I right. can hook them on any hook in here. Right. Right. But for a customer, their best hookup ratio, I believe, comes from a three or four aught yep. Yep. offset mm -hmm. demon circle hook. Okay. Made by Mustad. Okay. And I'll put a link below in the in the um, <laughs> they sell them at area. Walmart. Every, they just sell yeah. them everywhere now. And yeah. there's two different kinds. There's a, there's an inline, right. and it, it works. It right. works fine. Right. 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 And then there is an offset. Yeah. Now my preference with the two is I just started with an offset and it worked. So you know what I'm saying? I'm just old school. If it works, like my dad used to say, you don't leave fishing spot. You don't leave fish to find fish. Right. I don't worry about wh what's going on with technology. If this works, think, right. it works. So and and that's it. Yep. Yep. Okay. That's it. Okay, cool. So that's cool. what we use. All right. All right, Jerry. So now let's go to the fishing report. Tell us what's it, what's it been like uh, this week in Headwaters. Things are, <laughs> things are better. Yeah. Let's just say that. I knew that this cold front was going to knock them in the head. Yeah. Um, and I knew we were going to get some temperatures in the high 30s. All right. Yeah. Uh, I really yeah. it, and for those who don't know, I mean, it got for it, for it Florida caught, here it got went to twenty eight twenty six twenty six for two days. All of a sudden, it both it just killed things off. It when I say it caught just, me off guard. Yeah, there, I, I, I see. I was this. I was in the uh, actually in the Indian River Lagoon and I saw floating tarpon, floating snook, and That's a bunch right. of mangrove snappers. That's right. Flowing. It was just too 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 cold too fast. So anybody that's not anybody that's not from Florida, yeah. We don't get weather that cold very often, but when we get it, if it stays, yeah, it was too if it stays two days or yeah. more, our saltwater fish, which guys from Ohio and Minnesota and stuff, they don't have these. Our saltwater fish, our snook, especially, they cannot stand it. They can't take that cold. Yeah. They yeah. go into dormancy, and if they don't warm up within a certain amount yeah. of time, they die. Yeah. So you're talking about thousands of 30 pound, 25 pound snook that are, I mean, have been here, they're gone. That's it, it's cut them dry. Did you see any, how did, did, how did it affect the lake? So, it, it bass are not like that because you have bass in every state. No bass can take the lakes that have ice over them, but not <laughs> the Florida, Florida stream right. bass. Right. So we're a right. bunch of sissies, all yeah. of us, even <laughs> us. We don't yeah. like cold weather. It stumped them. It knocked them in the head, and I knew it was going to knock them in the right, head, but I right. didn't realize it was going to knock them in the head quite so bad. I figured in about three or four days they would straighten out. We're about 10 days into this right now, and they are just starting to liven up. Yeah. We had water temperatures 51 degrees. Yeah. That's unheard of. Yeah. 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 Last year was the coldest I had ever seen it, and I was like, are you kidding me? It's 56 degrees for mm -hmm. like three days. I was mm -hmm. like, the water temperature is 56 degrees. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. It was mm -hmm. 51 degrees here. Yeah, yeah. We had two days where it never left 57. It mm -hmm. never warmed up another degree the whole, and the sun was out like it is now. Right. Mm -hmm. So now, here we are about 10 days out. Our water temperature today was 73 degrees. Yeah, it's almost Our 80. Our temperature it's 80 is 80 something. degrees, so the, yeah. and these fish are on fire. Right. They're, now yep. they have finally, yep. you know, we called them two weeks ago, and they would barely, or a week and a half ago, and they would just, they're just like, yeah. now they're, You'll have a fish on, and you'll be like, "Oh, this is a good one. This is a good one." And then you'll get it up, and it'll be a three pounder. But you'll be like, "Oh, because oh, yeah. they're so great. They they're are full of energy." Yeah, you know? I was out. I was out yesterday, uh, the day before Lake Garcia on Absolutely. the kayak. I caught a. They were they were they were there. People were. I ran into a couple of uh, viewers. 
Dave, the detail guy, thumbs up. Thanks for staying, saying <laughs> goodbye and waving. He was on his boat. I was on my kayak with my, my buddy Paul. But uh, we caught some fish out there. It's, it's, it's happening. It's happening. Man. Yeah, so right now, you know, this time last year, things were already on fire. But we still have some areas in the lake that are topped out. The hydrilla is still topped out. The only thing that cuts that down is cold weather. Uh, we haven't had the cold weather that we should have had this year uh, until just now. Uh, so some of yeah. these, some of these two and three acre places that are like this, you know, that are flats and three and four foot of water that are topped out with hydrilla right now, uh, those fish are there. They're there right now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We can't get to them right. because it's so hydrillaed up. But the hydrilla will start falling off. It'll start breaking down. And some of these, you know, three and four acre flats that are three and four and five foot deep that have these fish on them spawning, that water is going to clear out the vegetation going to clear out and then you're going to be able to come in these places and sit and catch 30 40 fish in three or four hours and, and not move yeah there right now it's mm, a full moon is coming right now this week this week maybe tomorrow friday mm -hmm. i'm not sure exact but it's yeah. coming yeah yeah when that happens with this cold weather and now that it's warmed back up mm -hmm. it's gonna fire them off they have no it's not even something that they make a decision it is in their yeah, makeup. Instinct. Yep, yep, Boom. Yep. And they're going to come on beds and they're going to start feeding like there's no tomorrow. All right. Okay. Yeah, man. Cool. It's here for the next right. three months. That's it. For the next 90 days. Yep. This is Bass Central <laughs> right here. So, with that said, book your trip. Come on. Uh, you know, schedule that out. Uh, don't wait till these guys get too busy and they can't, can't find a slot. Captain Jerry, Captain Dan, want to go kayak fishing? Hit me up. Yeah, uh, we'll get you on the. Yeah, we'll you get just you. caught a monster last week in the kayak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's six and a half, seven. It's getting, yeah, getting, yeah, six, nice six pounder. So um, it's it's, yep. it's 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 getting this, good. It's getting good and getting gooder. This is what we <laughs> wait on all year long, right? That's here. right. That's right. And you know, right. right now, even you know, I'm a shiner guy. Everybody knows. That. Everybody who watches this, everybody who watches us knows I'm 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 a shiner guy. I like hunting these big giant fish on shiners, but. You got swim baits right now. You got chatter baits right now. You got all kinds of other artificial lures out there. Dan Ham, which is with us, he's I mean top notch artificial god. If you want to go artificial fishing with this guy, man, I mean that's it's a guaranteed. Um, he's more suited for that than I am, to be honest with you. I I like doing shiner trips, um, but this guy here, man, he can catch them on artificial. And, and and as long as you don't have a front just sitting right on top of you that couple of days, right. You can catch them, and you can catch them big right now in artificial, man. Yep, yep. And uh, especially with Dan, he's really super good with square bill crankbaits. Um, he's good with doing Carolina rigging, really good with rattle traps. So, I mean, come on, man. Right. Come see us. Let's go if fish. you want to experience a really unique Florida uh, Blue adventure. Cypress. Blue Cypress. Oh. Are you Kennesville? Air Airboat. Airboat on Kinnonsville. <laughs> so anybody who has not watched the channel that's new to the channel. We've I'm, got a couple of videos on. I'm a big airboat guy. Yeah. We do guides out of my airboat with shiners only. No trolling motor and no artificial. We strictly go to one of two places and we hunt yeah. the giants that I, when we caught three last year over 13. Yeah. Check out a video. But Jerry, yeah. Jerry and I <laughs> so went come, out so come a couple of weeks me. A couple of weeks ago. It's really, sure. really cool. Yeah, I'll so take it's it such a cool experience. Well, it's just a... It's a a unique lake. It's 2,500 acres. It's only about nine foot deep in its deepest. It was a cow pasture on yeah, a ranch. Yeah, yeah. Um, we've been fishing it since we were kids, man. Since about, I'm, I'll be 50 this month. I think maybe 19. Maybe I was 19 <laughs> the first time we fished it. Uh, it, it. It belonged to Nice Ranch. They sold the property. They flooded it, and then they opened it to the public. And for the first few years, when we were younger, we just caught giant crappie in it speckled yeah. birch huge up to two pounds yeah and then i noticed when i was in there younger that we would be in there bluegill fishing in the summer catching these great big huge what we call bullgill yeah because yeah. they're so big we would be catching six and seven pound bass on crickets yeah yeah so i was like hmm so then 10 years later i'm in there throwing shiners catching 10 and 12 pounders and i'm like hmm nobody's ever in there it's just beautiful it's full of giant bass and it's just, it's a, it's a well-kept secret, to be honest and, with and you, it, and I'm giving it up. <laughs> and it's, it's cool, because we, Jerry will typi Only typically boat. launch from Stick Marsh, so you're going to run across the north end of Stick Marsh, you're going to, really cool, watch the video from, from a few weeks ago. You're going to go, for someone that's new to airboat, you're going to go up and over the levee on the airboat, over the, uh, the ramps there. Yep. You're going to go into another section, and then you're going to do it all over again, up and across. 
Really, really. There's two ways to get a in the great lake. Florida experience. There's two ways to fish the lake. One's from bass boat, and you have to come in off a of 441, which is a go too far, Jerry. A, it's a 12. Oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> folks. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get here in my truck in a minute, going home. It's that fish tank. <laughs> it's that shiner tank. <laughs> anyway, so if you fish it from a bass boat, it's um, you got to come in from 441 and State Road 60, blah blah blah. But it's a it's a long trek, yeah. and it's a and it's a 12 and a half mile long <sighs> dirt yeah. road that runs down the middle of a bunch of ranches. So one good thing is, is if you do, do go that way, you do get to see a lot of really big bucks during yeah. deer season. Yeah. Yeah. What's unique about us is we put in right down there at the stick marsh, which is just two miles down the road from Headwaters, the same road. Yep. And it's a 10 minute boat ride, air boat ride through the marsh. And that's part of the experience. And it's beautiful. It's cool. And you don't have to worry about going down no dirt road for three hours. And it's just a 10 minute ride. and you're fishing so all right yeah. so there yeah. you have it uh free lining free lining shiners headwaters fishing report thanks for watching guys and uh we'll see you on the next one thank you cam jerry you're welcome brother. that was cool so long now see y'all next week